द स्टोरीज ऑफ महाभारत वेलकम डियर फ्रेंड्स टू नदर एपिसोड ऑफ द स्टोरीज ऑफ महाभारत इन द लास्ट एपिसोड वी हर्ड द स्टोरी ऑफ मत्स्य और फिश अवतार एंड अबाउट द कॉस्मिक साइकिल ऑफ क्रिएशन एंड डिस्ट्रक्शन युधिष्ठिरा सेड लॉर्ड मार्कंडेयर प्लीज टेल अस अबाउट द वर्च्यूज ऑफ ए वुमन मार्कंडेय सेड let me tell you a story in the olden days there lived a rishi named kaushik one day while he was studying the scriptures a crane flew over him and defecated on the rishi's head <gasps> the angry rishi looked up at the bird and his glowing eyes killed the crane instantly the bird dropped from the sky and fell at the rishi's feet looking at the dead bird kaushik felt bad he should have controlled his anger he thought later one day rishi kaushik went to beg for alms in a village he stood in front of a house and prayed for alms The lady of the house asked him to wait and went inside to get some rice and vegetables for the rishi. In the meantime, her husband came back from work and the woman got busy taking care of him. She forgot about the beggar waiting at the door. Later, when she remembered, she rushed to the door to serve the rishi. She said, "Pardon my delay. I was busy serving my husband." the rishi was furious how dare you keep me waiting don't you know a brahmin's rage can destroy the world the woman said control your anger rishi i am not a bird that you can kill with your looks i am sorry for the inconvenience but to me my husband is my first priority he came home tired and i had to take care of him first that is my duty Kaushik was surprised. How could this woman know of the bird incident? The woman said, "Your anger killed a poor little bird, and I know all about it because of my special powers. I acquired this power due to my devotion to my husband. O oh, great Rishi, if you cannot conquer anger, lust, and desire," you cannot claim yourself to be a brahmin you may be well versed in the scriptures but you need to learn the basics of human virtues go to mithila and meet the virtuous butcher he will teach you the ways of life better than any brahmin or rishi kaushik was curious how could a butcher be as virtuous as a brahmin As per the woman's instructions, Kaushik went to the city of Mithila and looked for the virtuous butcher. The Brahmins directed him to a meat shop, where he found the butcher selling deer and buffalo meat to his customers. Kaushik felt a surge of nausea when he saw the way the butcher chopped meat and handled the blood and viscera of the dead animals. Kaushik controlled his feelings and introduced himself to the butcher. "I am Kaushik. I came from far to the butcher stopped him and said, "I know who you are, and I know that the virtuous lady has asked you to come to me. But this is not the right place to have a conversation. Come with me to my home." The butcher took Kaushik to his home. the baffled rishi asked i i don't understand the woman told me that you are as virtuous and as wise as a brahmin 
then how could you conduct this filthy business? This is not the duty of a virtuous man. The butcher said, Selling meat is my family business and I have no qualms about it. I conduct my duties according to the norms of a virtuous human being. I serve my parents. I speak the truth. I don't envy others. I donate as much as I can and I eat only what is left after serving my guests and servants. I do not eat meat. I do not kill any animal and I sell the meat that I get from the other hunters. Meat serves the hungry. Hence, there is no sin in killing animals for food. The learned say that rice, vegetables, fruits, medicinal plants, animals and birds all are edible by human beings. The kitchen of King Rantideva cooked 2,000 cows every day and the meat served to all the king's guests. The food chain connects all living beings and we can only survive by eating the other. We cannot avoid killing. When a man walks, he kills thousands on the ground without even knowing. Nobody in this world can avoid killing some living being or other. The virtuous butcher then gave Kaushik a long lesson on dharma, philosophy and spirituality. Later he said, Come with me. Let me show you how I practice my way of life. He took Kaushik to a beautiful house. Inside the house, he saw the butcher's parents taking rest after having their meal. The butcher touched their feet to pay his respects. Then he turned to Kaushik and said, My parents are my gods. I only worship them and serve them instead of worshipping those in the heavens. Rishi Kaushik, you have ignored your parents. Instead of taking care of them in their old age, you abandoned them. You left home to study the scriptures, leaving your parents alone. They have gone blind crying for you ever since you left. You should go back to your parents and serve them when they need you the most. It is your duty. Rishi Kaushik felt ashamed of himself. He touched the feet of the butcher and said, You have saved me from a terrible sin. I will go back to my village and take care of my parents as long as they are alive. The butcher held him and pulled him up to his chest. Kaushik asked, You cannot be a sudra. Tell me, what misfortune has caused you to adopt this profession? The butcher said, In my past life, I was a learned Brahmin and a dear friend of our king. One day, I went hunting with the king and I mistook a rishi wearing a deer skin as a deer and shot him with my bow and arrow. When I heard the cry, I was shocked pulled out the arrow from his body and took him to his ashram. Fortunately, the rishi survived. But the angry rishi cursed me that in my next life, I would be born as a sudra butcher. I begged for mercy. The rishi had pity on me and said, although I would be born of the sudra caste, I would be as learned and as wise as a brahmin. I'd also remember everything of my past life. He said, If I lead a life of righteousness and take care of my parents like gods, then in the following life I'd be born again as a Brahmin. Kaushik took the butcher's lessons to hurt and went back to his village to take care of his parents. While the Pandavas were listening to Markandeya, Krishna's wife Satyabhama came to Draupadi and said, My dear Panchali, what is your secret? Panchali was surprised. She asked, What secret are you talking about? Satyabhama came close to Draupadi and said, 
you have such popular and handsome husbands and have been the rulers of the world how did you manage to tame them they always follow your advice they always include you in any major decisions they make and they never seem to get angry with you how is that possible if you know of any secret magic mantra or, or maybe a magic potion please tell me i want to keep my husband krishna under my control too draupadi was taken aback by such an unusual question from satyabhama she said i am sorry satyabhama i don't know of any such magic to control my husband only evil women practice the devious methods you mention and i am unaware of any such means being krishna's wife how could you ask such a question remember no husband likes a wife who tries to control him by unfair means mantras cannot tame a husband neither can potions if a woman tries to drug her husband with some unknown concoction it can cause severe damage the man can become sick important lose his eyesight or hearing and suffer from long term disabilities if you want to know my secret then listen to what i do i never lust for any other man even a god however handsome rich and powerful he may be i let go of my pride ego anger and desire and serve my husbands along with their other wives i eat only after my husbands have eaten i keep my house and my kitchen clean i do not complain and i do not scold my husbands i avoid the company of evil women i avoid staying outside my home for long I do not laugh excessively neither do I cry without a cause I keep my anger under control I follow all the norms of a household as taught by my mother in law when yudhishthira was the emperor i took care of the staff members of her palace i kept myself updated of the income and expenses of the kingdom the pandavas would entrust with me the well being of her dependents while they stayed busy with their jobs I gave up all physical comfort and performed my duties to the best of my ability. Satyabhama, this is the secret to impress my husbands. Trust me, I know of no other magic trick. Satyabhama said, "Draupadi, pardon me if my words have offended you. I consider you my friend and I was only kidding with you." Draupadi said, "Satyabhama, let me share with you the secrets to win over your husband from the influence of other women always serve krishna with love and affection offer him the best food flowers and fragrances behave with him kindly make him understand that you are taking the utmost care to make him happy never reveal to others what krishna tells you even if it isn't a secret care for those whom your husband favors and avoid those he dislikes do not be intoxicated and lose your guard in front of other men even if they are close relatives like prince samba or prince pradyumna befriend those women who are of pure soul and avoid those who are short tempered liars addicts and thieves in the meantime markandeya was preparing to leave krishna called satyabhama and said come we should be leaving too satyabhama embraced draupadi and said thank you for sharing the tips with me let me tell you soon your husbands will win back their kingdom and once again you will be the empress those who were responsible for your suffering consider them dead and don't worry about your five sons they are doing fine in dwarka subhadra takes care of them just the way you'd have done rukmini also makes sure that they have everything they need my father-in-law basudeva he looks after them too 
Balarama and others, they all love your sons. Soon you will meet them. Satyabhama then mounted the chariot along with Krishna. They waved goodbye to Draupadi as the chariot vanished into the horizon behind a cloud of dust. <laughs>